Welcome back to Satisfactory. You know, this power tower would look a lot cooler if we didn't know that all these sparks wasn't the result of us discharging all of our stored power. We still have time. We still have time. In the meantime, we are going to build this really cool blueprint. All right, we want to take something as simple as iron ingots and turn them into rotors in one blueprint. We're going to do that with the use of one alternate, this cast screw. All right, this allows us to go from iron ingots straight to screws. I think I want to move this one over one, but let's check. We'll put down a merger to collect and mostly just to get our spacing right. Yeah, we could probably come off a bit. All right, so two spaces on this side means two spaces on this side. Then we'll merge here. And then on this one, we'll drop a splitter. So at this point, everything is going down this line that way. Hello. All right, so if we give this system iron ingots, on this side, we'll turn them into screws, iron ingot. And then on this side, we'll turn them into iron rods, iron ingots, okay? And it's not too bad. We're only using 15 on that side and 12 on that side. So we're not using a huge amount. Then we'll just go down the line here. Fill these in. Come back. So we want to make sure we're merging our merchandise. Okay, we'll just stop there for that side. And then we'll build four more of these. Now we're going to cheat just a little bit here. We're going to check this assembler because we know that that's the, that's the thing that we're going to use to build the rotors, right? These rotors right here. Just want to take a peek at the recipe. So we're talking about a hundred screws per minute per machine. So if we put in two of these, that's 200 screws per minute, which is fine because our assemblers make exactly 50. So we've got that covered. Four machines, each making 50 screws per minute. But the iron rod side, we want 80 iron rods per minute. If we check this recipe, it's going to generate... Wait, do we want 80? Un momento. Always check your recipe. If we build two of these, we want 40 rods per minute. I thought that sounded a little high. So 
So then we go over here. This is outputting 15. So let's just change this output to 10. Save us a little power. All right, there we go. So now these four machines are making exactly the right amount of stuff, perfectly efficient for us to put in two. Come on. For us to put in two assemblers to make rotors. We just have to connect everything up here. Going down the line, down the line. All right. So the end result of this is that we have a fully horizontally connectable. I mean, it's just so much power being discharged horizontally connectable blueprint. The only part we have to think about is these guys are outputting screws at a horrendous rate, right? 50 per. So that's 200. That's 200 on the belt at this point right here. So you can only put in three of these down a line. And then you have to make a choice, right? But for right now, this is fine. This is great. Let's put a little bit of, uh, which one do we want this time? We've been doing a lot of panel work. Let's do frame. to put in our standard glass floor. It has become my design choice of choice. Uh, sneak this sidewall in. All right. And then up here, we just want a couple of assemblers. Now, I'm going to suggest that you put them in down here. So just to remind ourselves, everything is going in from this direction and then getting processed on this direction. So everything that we want is down here. The thing to remember is that this is also perfectly balanced. So it's okay for us to pull the stuff back this way, especially the outputs. So what we'll do is we'll just um, just put this guy in here like this, right? We're going to turn it the other direction. We're going to give ourselves an extra space like this. And then we're going to put down an assembler. And you can put this on either side. The fact that I'm choosing to put it on the left side isn't the point. The point is, is that everything is now being angled back towards us. 
Okay, and we want two of these. And we'll... One of these days I will remember to use the right splurger. This one will snake around. This one will go straight in. Snake you around, go straight in, make it a buzz. Right, so all the good stuff, the screws and the rods, Right, you can imagine it easily that we'll go three down. One, two, three. And then at that point, we'll lift them up. We'll combine them into a single bus. Swing, and then send them down the line. And then at that point, we'll have our desired rotors. We're gonna merge our merchandise. I'm always smart enough to remember to merge my merchandise. I never remember to split my supplies. So that's it. Right, you take an iron ingot. We're doing exactly 40, 10 each on four machines, iron rods. And we're doing 200 screws, 50 each on four machines. And then we come up here. We turn those into rotors. And that's 200 screws, 100 each on two machines, and 40 iron rods, 20 each on two machines. I mean, that's Pretty sweet. And we can crank out some rotors. And then if you wanted to, right, you've got this one more level up here. You could squeeze in. You could squeeze in some additional activity. But I don't think we're going to. We're going to leave this kind of bare bones. We're not even going to add lighting. Though I am tempted to add some lighting. We're not going to add lighting. We're just going to have it be this. We'll build three of these out. One, two, three. We'll take the good stuff from this lower floor. We'll ship it up here. We'll process it. And you could theoretically, in your own build, make another level. That was an aggressive mouse roll on my part. You can make your own level where you would add something like staters and then turn the whole thing into motors. But for right now, let's save what we've got. We're going to call this Iron ingot two rotors. And we'll get our rotor icon. And no, we'll stick with the standard color. No, this one's more interesting than just a regular blueprint, though. Let's go with the little purple innovation. Iron ingot to rotors in one blueprint. Insert iron ingots, you get rotors. Kind of an interesting spin on blueprints. I'm always curious now how much stuff we could actually squeeze in here. If I didn't have... Hmm... I have a phobia about smelters being indoors. 
But I'm kind of curious. How many ingots are we using? There's 50 on that side. 40 on that side. So 90 total. I could probably... We could probably squeeze in. Ninety total, huh? Let's just check the recipe here. Oh, it only takes three of them to make ninety. Well, we could easily put another level on this. Take in the iron take in the raw iron and then drop it like on an outside lift right back into here. But we wouldn't do it on an outside lift. We'd do it on an internal. Let's make that let's make that a bonus uh We'll make that a bonus recipe or blueprint. if we can squeeze it in here. Well, the wrong direction. Yeah, let's try to keep the directional flow the same. Um, why'd you turn on me? I have to check this each time we put it down. All right, so all the same stuff that we just talked about, except we're gonna put some awesome smokestacks on this thing. Oh, it's just a little too far up. Oh man, that's brutal. I mean, how bad do we want this? We can make this work. Just need to drop you down ever so slightly. Is there such thing as a half wall? Making it steel might be the might be the choice. Oh, nice. And then we put in some smelters. We only need three of them. Let's see, we wanna enter on this side of the world.
Something like that. Let's give this a shot. Reverse this. Nice. So three of these. so cool and it's clip free I could theoretically go down a little bit more but I think I'm okay with this Still not going to work. Darn it. So close. If these weren't so close, I could probably make that work. This is where we'll pull in the ore. And then we'll just split it off. There you go. And for every, so that's making 90 iron ingots. And then down here, one last super double check, 12.5 times four. That's 50. And this one is 40, so that's 90. So there you go. So that takes it from plain old iron ore 
to rotors in one blueprint. And then all you have to do is give yourselves a little bit of a vertical supply layer. And you're all set. I think for stylistic points, we'll put these two one walls like that. Oh yeah, I'm liking this a lot. Oh, and the backside doesn't need it because it's connected at the, the top. And then the last place, we'll just make that where we drone out the rotors. Droning in iron ore is probably a little probably a little overkill. It probably makes more more sense just to build this factory right by an iron ore mine. Like here. Right? And then just drone in the rotors. Drone out the rotors, I should say. Alright, so there you go. Nice quick little video. Interesting thing. Little uh something to sort of get your brain going a little bit as far as like how do you deal with oh man i'm so tempted now to put in lighting because this is now a self-contained little factory yeah and also i didn't put any power in either let's finish up Getting a little too excited. Let's let's uh, put in some power. We'll put in a double wall here. And then we'll just put another one right here. Can we ask this to upgrade? Would you like to upgrade? Thank you. I suppose we'll let that be the lighting side. And then on this side, we'll build power. We'll do one high-end double wall. Will that fit on this wall? Say like right here. Upgrade both of those to high end good ones. We'll connect the power for these two machines on this side. Then down here, We might have to do a little more because this is eight machines. So we're going to need two of these. Yeah, we're going to have to upgrade both of these. Because it needs to connect not only the stuff here, but the next blueprint. So 
we need to leave at least one connection available. So that each of these connect to four machines. And then you will just do a straight up connection. We'll hop over. Same principle applies here. We need to leave this one at least one space. And we need one more of these to have one space for future. I'll let the internal guy do most of the connecting. So this one connect to this next blueprint and this one connect to the next blueprint. All right, we've got power in place. Just gonna floodlight this one. And this light can connect to this light, and this can like connect to this light, and then this light can connect to the next blueprint. Oh, we ran out of quick wire. I wonder if I have any over here. Zero quick wire? I find that hard to believe. All right, quick cut while I go grab some quick wire. Actually, maybe there's some in our little storage area. Wow. Well, I tried. Quick cut. Be right back. Okay, grab some quick wire. Then I started thinking about all the next steps that we're going to have to make. I might be the only person in the world that wants to zoop these. Yeah, I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to light the, uh, the smelters. Okay, there we go. So now we have our lighting on its own circuit. Everything's connected. And we're going from iron ore down to iron rods and screws up to rotors. And then it'll just be a question of how much iron ore can we jam into this? I wonder, just thinking a little bit about, okay, that's a pure node, so we could just build it right there. But actually building this factory, well, that's an obvious task for a future video. 
Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.